Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kong Has Problems. Tonight we're working on Module 5, Lesson 12, and tonight we are using benchmarks to compare two fractions on the number line. This is a new concept for us, and we haven't done a lot of comparison of fractions in this way, certainly on a number line at all to this point. So this is brand new stuff, and I hope you'll stick with me as I do about three problems from tonight's homework that should help get you going. Let's take a look at the first one. Problem number one asks us to plot the following points on the number line without measuring. Oh, okay. Well, that's kind of new. Uh, let's see. First one we have to do uh, 1ai is 2 thirds. Let's think about 2 thirds. We've got our benchmark fraction of 1 half. And our question is, is 2 thirds more than 1 half or less than 1 half? Well, let's see. It seems like the numerator and the denominator have a relationship in one half, right? Where one is exactly one half of the denominator. And this looks like it's more than that, right? Two thirds seems like it would be more than one half. And that makes sense, because if we sort of eyeball, if we did thirds between zero and one, we would do one, two, three. So I think we're gonna do it this way. Without measuring exactly, we're gonna say that two thirds is over here greater than our benchmark fraction. Let's take a look at our second one, our double I, now part number two, it is one-sixth. Let's see, one-sixth. Well, that is, seems like a much smaller fraction than our benchmark, right? Because this is not, let's see, how many six would it have to be to be our benchmark? Let's see, six divided by two would be three. Three-sixths would be one-half, and this is only one-sixth. So we'll get on the eyeball and say, well, that'd be about down here then, that this would be about one-sixth. Let's take a look at our third one, four-tenths. Well, again, let's try to compare that with our benchmark fraction, right? How many tenths would be a half? Would be a half. Let's see. Ten divided by two would be five. So five-tenths would be a half, and this is four-tenths. So again, this is going to be somewhere less than, right, somewhere less than one-half, our benchmark. That's about four-tenths. So now that we've got those on our number line, let's see if those make sense, right? Zero, one-sixth is smaller than four-tenths, which is a little smaller than a half, and then two-thirds is smaller than a half, and then, of course, one is bigger than all the other fractions there. Let's take a look at 1B. Use the number line in part A to complete compare the fractions by writing greater than, less than, or equal to on the lines. Let's see, two-thirds and one-half. Two-thirds looks like it's bigger than one-half, so we will draw a greater than symbol. Let's look at the second one. Four tenths and one sixth. Looks to me like four tenths is larger than one sixth, so I'm going to do a greater than there as well. I think that's what our number line tells us. Sound good? All right, let's take a look at two more parts, uh, two more problems from part three. Part three gives us the same instructions for all these problems. It says compare the fractions given below by writing greater than or less than on the lines, give a brief explanation for each answer, referring to the benchmark of zero, one half, and one. All right, well, let's take a look at the first one, problem 3a. Problem 3a says, what about one half and one fourth? Well, let's see. One fourth is a smaller unit, right? Four of those would fit on the number line from zero to one, whereas only two of the halves would. Um, anytime we have a larger denominator, that means that we have a smaller unit of fraction, right? So I'm pretty confident in saying that one half is greater than one fourth. In fact, I think we can know. Let's see, how many fourths would it take for these two to be equal? Well, four divided by two would be two. So I think two fourths and one half would be equivalent fractions. I remember that from some of our lessons uh, six and seven before. So that's going to be my explanation that uh, it would take, oops, let me switch to my pen. It would take, it would take two-fourths to equal one-half, which is our benchmark fraction. Awesome. Well, I'm going to skip down to the last of problem three, which is a considerably more difficult one, right? Uh, let's say we were comparing 51 one-hundredths with five-tenths. Wow, this is an interesting one. Let's see. Five-tenths. Well, something strikes me as curious about that. Five-tenths looks to me like we know an equivalent fraction, right? Five-tenths. Let's see. The greatest common factor of five and ten is five. It looks to me like we could do five divided by five and ten divided by five. We would get one half. Yep. 
5 tenths looks to me like the same thing as 1 half. And that's one of our benchmark fractions, which is interesting. Now let's see. Let's take a look at our other fraction we're comparing. 51 one hundredths. Well, that's interesting, too, because, you know, let's just say for a second that it was 50 one hundredths instead of 51 one hundredths. 50 one hundredths looks exactly like one half, right? Same thing. But we have something that's just a little bigger than one half. And that tells me that we have something in 51 one hundredths that is a little bigger than one half. And I think that's how what I'm going to say. I'm going to say 51 one hundredths is exactly one one hundredth bigger than fifty one hundredths, which is one half. Awesome, and that's going to be my explanation. So fifty one one hundredths is just a tiny bit bigger than five tenths, which is to say one half. That's the equivalent fraction. Excellent. Well, I hope this has been illuminating here on our first time dealing with inequalities on the number line with fractions. Uh, all new stuff for us. Be patient with yourself. Replay if you need to. And see me next time on Mr. Kung Has Problems.